Hello everyone, welcome back to Northeast Wisconsin Technical College. I'm Matt Schmelzer here with Practical Machinists. And uh, today we're gonna look at some work holding devices and some uh, CNC programming uh, for that. Uh, so right here, uh, I got a project that the students work on. Uh, this is a vice jaw for a standard uh, milling machine vise. And uh, what they have to do is come through and mill an angle on this vice jaw. Now, this jaw is used a lot for uh, holding like round bar stock down into a vise. Uh, you know, a lot of times V blocks are used, uh, then the part is being located by the V, whereas this type of jaw pulls the part, the round part down and locates off of the ways of the vise. So here we got our piece of blank material. We got our blueprint here. Uh, looking at this vise jaw, you can see this particular one creates a 75 degree angle or 15 degrees from vertical. So that's what we're gonna be machining. Now there's a few options with uh, machining that angle. Um, one option is to always sit, uh, stick this in a fixture on a rotary axis to machine that angle. Real simple, using a face mill. Well, in this instance here, we don't have a rotary axis, so we're going to be using a ball nose end mill and traversing across this part, stepping over in the Y axis and down in the Z axis to create that angle on that surface. So we'll go over the chalkboard and I'll show you the layout of this project. So here I got just a quick little image on our board here of our vice jaw and uh, we're going to be placing the origin over here in the upper left hand corner and uh, we're going to be using a three quarter inch ball nose end mill for this job. So essentially we're going to be positioning that end mill over in this corner just off of the part, uh, half of the uh, diameter of the tool and we'll bring it down to the top surface of the part and then we're going to traverse across to the right hand side moving off of the part half the diameter. And then we're going to reposition down in the y-axis. Uh, we're going to be going with 20 thousandths in this instance. Now we can move more than 20 thousandths. That's going to create more of a rougher scallop or a surface across that angle. We can definitely go less too if we choose to. With the program we're writing, it's going to be real simple to change that. So once we move down in the y-axis, we're also going to be bringing the z-axis down a certain amount, traversing back across to the other side and then moving down an additional 20 thousandths in the y-axis and stepping down in the z-axis again. What we're gonna be doing is utilizing a sub-program with a loop command to accomplish this. Gonna make the program very simple, very short and compact, very easy to edit also. If we choose to change our step over amount in y and z, uh, or our feeds or speeds or anything like that, it's gonna be real easy to edit this program. So kind of looking over at the side view of this, you can see if we're going to reposition our end mill 20 thousandths in the Y, we also have to bring it down in the Z axis also. With a little trigonometry, I determined I'm going to bring my Z axis down 0 0.0054. So for every 20 thousandths in the Y axis, 0 0.0054 in the Z axis. And then I can traverse back across. So we'll go over and we'll look at the G-code next. So here I got my G-code all listed out on the board here and I'll kind of walk through a line for a line just to show you how this is going to work. Now there's a lot of different techniques and, and uh, ways of writing code to accomplish the exact same thing. This is just the format that we teach at the school. Now this G-code will work on all of our Haas controls or any Fanuc control also. So I'll start off with my main program number, program 1000. Uh, my status line, I just go into absolute positioning inch dimensioning and cancel any kind of tool compensation that may be active. And then my next line, my tool change line, I rapid traverse, call up tool one, which is going to be our three quarter inch end mill. Next line, I'm turning the spindle on 8,000 RPM clockwise direction. And then I'm moving over to that first position, that upper left corner, uh, calling up my G54, my workpiece coordinate system. And I move to X negative 0.375. That's half of my tool diameter off the left edge of the part. And of course our back edge placing the center of the tool right at Y0. My next line I'm going to call for my height offset, G43, height offset for tool 1. And I'm going to move to 3 inches above the part, just a clearance plane to verify everything is set correctly. And then I'm going to wrap it down to a feed plane of 0.1, turning my coolant down. And then my next line I'm just feeding right down to the top surface of the part, right to Z0 and I call it my feed rate. At that point, 
I'm going to call up a subprogram for the actual cutting of this angled surface. So I call up subprogram number 1001. And then what I did is I placed it into a loop. And we'll go over that very briefly. But when we go over to our subprogram now, the very first line, it's feeding over to X 6.375, which is the width of the part plus half of the tool off the edge of the part. From there, I go into incremental mode and I bring my Y axis down incrementally 20 thousandths. That's my step over amount. And then incremental distance of negative .0054 in the Z axis. That's going to get us into position to make, take our next cut across. In my next line, I go back to absolute positioning and I move back to my X negative .375 all the way to the left side of the part. From there, I go an additional 20 thousandths in the Y, going incrementally, stepping down another 20 thousandths in Y, and .0054 in the Z axis also. What that's going to do is get the Y and the Z position in the correct spot to take another cut back across. So then I go back into absolute positioning, send it back to the main program. Now, Going back to my main program, I, I put a loop command in here of 57 times. What this is going to do is rerun this subprogram 57 times. What I did is I took the width of my part, which was 2.25, and I divided it by 40 thousandths of an inch. Because I'm doing 20 thousandths for my first pass, 20 thousandths for my second pass that it is leaving my subprogram at. So then what I figured out, it was actually 56.25 passes across that part. So I just rounded up to 57 times. So what it's going to basically do is run this subprogram 57 times, continually moving incremental 20 thousandths in Y and 5 and 4 tenths in the Z axis every single time. And what it's going to do is just keep stepping down the surface of that part to create our 15 degree angle. So let's go back to the machine and put the program in. So I went ahead and I entered in both my main program and my subprogram into the control. Uh, we have our three quarter inch carbide ball nose loaded into the machine with our offset set. Our part is clamped into the vise and workpiece coordinate system is set. We're basically ready to run this part. So we pulled our part out of the mill. Um, we didn't go through and place the holes in this for this example here, but we went through and finished that 15 degree angle. Um, you can see by our 20,000 step over each pass, we ended up with a fairly nice finish, not a lot of scallops. Uh, for this type of application, uh, I'm perfectly satisfied with that. So to show you, you know, how simple it can be with just a few lines of G-code using a sub-program, with a loop command, how we can accomplish a lot of toolpath movement with a small amount of G-code lines in our program. So just to kind of show you guys, just another type of work holding device that we can use for holding bar stock in a vise uh, using an angled vise jaw. So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Tune in next time. We'll use the same technique to go through and machine a radius on the corner of a part. Um, other than that, uh, we'll see you guys next time.